Hello everyone, welcome to your love reading for the second half of July from the 16th all the way through the 31st. Before we get into the actual reading, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the lineup changes moving forward. So if you want to just head on over to the main reading, I will timestamp it down below. You can go ahead and skip this section if you're not interested in listening. All right, guys, so let me just talk a little bit about what's going on. So I did announce recently that I will be deleting my Patreon page. And the reason why I am doing that is because I recently just started a new job as a cake decorator, which is something that I've actually done for many, many years. But, you know, with the pandemic and everything that happened, I actually had a baking business that didn't survive the pandemic. And so I was doing that at the same time that I was doing my YouTube channel. And so once that baking business phased out and I had an LLC and everything going on, and it was just costing way too much to continue having the LLC without actual sales going on during the pandemic. And so basically I was forced to end that business. And so I was in the midst of really getting rid of a lot of bakery supplies and pans and things of that nature. And one of my dear friends from years ago, they actually own a baking business and offered me a job as a cake decorator. And so I love it. And it's definitely taking up a lot more of my time throughout the week. So part of the lineup changes moving forward is I will, of course, still do the love forecasts for the first half of the month, as well as the second half of the month, but we are going to basically be getting rid of the extended readings. So what you see on YouTube will be a full reading and there will be no need to head on over to Patreon to watch the extended. It was just a lot of work to have to produce 24 videos every two weeks and just, you know, with the schedule change and a brand new job, that's just not something that I'm going to be able to sustain. So first half of the month, second half of the month, every zodiac sign will receive a full reading moving forward. And um, for those who have purchased membership on Patreon, since I'm going to be closing down the Patreon page as of July 31st, I didn't feel the need to separate the videos. And so therefore you can definitely watch the entire reading here on YouTube and no need to head over to Patreon to watch the extended. All right, guys. So for those who did end up purchasing a Patreon membership, thank you so very much for your love and support there. It's definitely much appreciated guys more than you will ever know. But as a result of this change, I'm just not able to continue to do that and just don't have enough time in the day or the energy to be able to put forth that same effort and be able to give you guys quality readings. So moving forward, as I've mentioned, I'm just going to go ahead and do the 12 first half as well as the second half. And then we're doing a lot more live streams throughout the week. Um, well, when I say a lot, it's, it's two live streams per week. The ones on Wednesdays are super chat Wednesdays where it really gives folks the opportunity, a chance to get a mini live reading for a super chat, at least a minimum super chat of $9.99. And so if that's something that you're interested in to be able to book a reading during the live stream, you can get it at a discounted rate rather than booking it on my website since many readings range from $35 to $75 on my website. So it's definitely a lot more economical and gives you advice and it's just a mini reading. So it's not a longer reading like what you could book on my website for the um, more expensive readings, but you know, just a quick glimpse into your situation. So that's on Wednesdays and moving forward, we're probably going to start doing it at three as compared to the 2 PM time slot that we've done previously. And then we're still trying to determine the other day and time for the second live stream for the week. So I'll go ahead and announce that as soon as I'm able to figure out my schedule and you can always check my community tab here on YouTube as well as on my Instagram page. If you follow me there. 
All right, guys, so I think as far as that, um, I think that's as far as all the changes. And then I'll try to definitely get the intuitive channeled messages posted every Friday like I have. But that might also actually end up changing more than likely to Sunday since I work a full day on Friday. So I'm just kind of now thinking about it. And we're probably going to have to switch that day since I'm tapped out. Like this is a very hands-on on your feet all day type job. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it. It's something I'm very passionate about, but it's exhausting, you know, having to just get back into that grind of waking up early, having a full day of work for it's, it's a part-time job, but it's definitely a full day of work for several days out of the week. All right, guys. So that's the change that's happening. And let's get right into your Zodiac reading for the second half of July. All right, Aries, let's get into your reading for the second half of July. So I'll be starting with the Mardi Gras Oracle by Jennifer Aquarius Tarot. General advice, as always, so please keep that in mind throughout your reading and take from it, as always, what makes sense for you. All right, guys, so let's begin, Aries. When it comes to your partnerships, love, romance, your life right now, what needs to come forward for this reading? Angels and spirit guides, please, for Aries. Well, we've got a transformation. Ooh, and I actually love the next card. Look at this. Movement, opportunities, and we have options, okay? Now, normally when I see that options, card because I mean we've got skulls right here <laughs> you know usually I'll I'll see it more as a negative like somebody having way too many options too many choices in love and romance and unable to really make a solid commitment towards a partnership and maybe for some of you guys are able to relate to that but look at the progression of these key words transformation movement opportunities and options so if somebody treated you let's just say as an option rather than being their number one choice in a relationship it does seem that things are going to be changing for the better for you especially if you happen to be in between relationships maybe you're not in a partnership right now you could be single and looking for love certainly while well, you've got choices and opportunities that may very well present itself to you. Who knows, maybe not quite the second half of July, but it's on its way to you, okay? So things are changing, I feel, for the better. And I'm also feeling that that's necessary because you probably have been through some trying times, not just necessarily only about love and romance. It could be other parts of your life too. So I'm actually liking this group of cards right here and how it's presenting itself all right so let's go ahead and grab some tarot and let's see what else we can find out i'll be pulling from my 10 yellow tarot deck here angels and spirit guides please for aries so what's going on because i i kind of feel you've been through some stuff and so this could be the universe's way of helping you to heal, to move you forward, to get you out of a situation that might have been very challenging for you. Four Aries. Four of Pentacles. Okay, we do see the keywords here, material attachments. Take that, of course, if it makes sense for somebody that you've been dealing with. Maybe they were all about their money rather than the relationship. Maybe they... We're just working too hard and not being able to dedicate any time or energy towards the relationship. So that might actually be a good thing if this is presenting itself here, because maybe this person really needed to work on this. So that could be what's changing and transforming and in order for things to get moving in the right direction. Because if things don't shift and change here with this person, if they really are more so focused on maybe working too much, their career is everything, and 
the relationship takes a back seat. It could be something like that. And if that's the case, maybe part of what's going on here is they realize something's going to have to change in order for the relationship to be saved, you know, before you start, I don't want to say entertaining other options. It's, it's more so just opening yourself up to the possibility of finding new love and starting over, you know? So I'm kind of getting that vibe with that. Hmm. Look at this. So we've got the Ten of Cups. We do have the Seven of Wands, you know, so territorial as we can see right there. Seven of Wands, you know, this is perhaps, you could have also been dealing with somebody who was very controlling, you know, always the one who wanted to maintain control in the partnership, but that could also be very constricting, you know, and sometimes the Four of Pentacles could be somebody who's too possessive, too clingy, you know, trying to control every darn thing there is. Now, for some of you guys, you could have been married to this person, or at one point in time, you really saw them as marriage material, you know, but the way it's presenting itself here, because this is the next card, we've got the Nine of Wands, they probably ended up hurting you because the relationship suffered. If they were focused on as I've mentioned, maybe on career or other things or even other people, you know, if they really were entertaining other options here. Wow, this is quite fitting. Look at this. So we've got the Ace of Wands. That's followed by the Seven of Cups. And then let me just make some room. And then we've got the judgment card right here. So maybe they're going through this awakening. Maybe they've gained clarity that if they still want you to be in their life, especially if you guys are apart right now, because look at this, many options, options, right? Too many choices. So I guess it is kind of pounding out to be that way for this reading, Aries, if you relate to it. They had way too many options in love and romance. And so I kind of feel if you relate to this reading, you're just ready to move on from that to be able to find this Ten of Cups, to be able to find harmony in your love life with somebody who can offer you those things. This person clearly hurt you. You've been wounded by them. Yeah. And so here you are. You're being given this opportunity. There's the opportunity right here to be able to start fresh, to start again, for love to bloom and grow in your life. It falls on you perhaps to be able to create a new beginning for yourself through the choices that you then make, because you also have options and choices and new opportunities. But here's the thing with this judgment card. Okay. It can sometimes be somebody especially if they've spent time apart from you to really evaluate their actions with how things played out between the two of you in the past. And so a part of this transformation and movement might be that they're now ready for marriage. They're now ready for commitment. They're ready to be that partner that you really needed them to be. They don't want to make or entertain other options in love and romance. They're ready to choose you and only you. This right here could be a forthcoming apology from this person, wanting a reunion, wanting commitment, perhaps. Not to say that that's a guaranteed yes on your part, that you're going to for sure accept them back in if you've been wounded and hurt by this person, because they have to realize you have options too. You absolutely have the choice to take them back or not bottom of the deck, we've got the three of pentacles, which of course is all about teamwork right here. And if that was lacking before, then more than likely you either severed ties or you just weren't going to put up with it. And so you might've cut them out of your life, you know? And so this could also be you just protecting your heart space because you already know what it's like to have dealt with this person that disappointed you and hurt you. So 
I feel the ball is in your hands, honestly, Aries, as far as the opportunities start again. You can either choose to take somebody back or work on a relationship if you guys didn't actually break up. But these options and choices could have interfered in the relationship and ultimately either broke you guys up or created a lot of conflict. Now, if you guys are in separation, they could have gone through this awakening. They now understand what it is that's needed in order for them to really show up for you in order to be the partner that you really needed them to be rather than one foot out the door entertaining other options. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab some additional advice here. I'm going to pull from the Hidden Truth Oracle. This is by All Things Intuitive. So when it comes to this person that you're thinking about, what is in their heart space? What are they hiding from you? And what is it that they feel the need to express at this time? And of course, some of these words you could even be able to relate for yourself and what it is that maybe you want to say to them, especially if there is no communication in the 3D. Angels and spirit guides, please, for Aries, second half of July. What do we need to know here? What does this person need to share with you? What is their real truth in their heart? It's time for me to heal now. So maybe through their own healing, that will actually help them to confront their own issues, their inner demons, and to be able to show up for you as a better person. You were the best thing in my life. As you can see here, it's past tense, were. It does not say you are the best thing in my life. So were, this person is from your past. More than likely, you guys are not together at this point in time. There could also be particular songs that you hear or that you listen to, and maybe it triggers up some memories when it comes to this person, you know, or maybe they hear particular songs and it reminds them of you. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab some additional tarot here. I'll be pulling from my Valentine Connection tarot. So yeah, they had to lose you perhaps to realize that you were the best thing in their life. Maybe when they're feeling lonely and sad, they listen to songs you know, those sad love songs, and it reminds them of you, maybe. All right, so look at this, guys. Look at this. Ten of Swords, that backstabbing. So if they treated you this way, Aries, this was a very painful breakup, perhaps. It hurt you. It hurt them. Wow. Look at this. Knight of Swords. Five of Cups. Can't get away from this one, you see? They're going through this awakening. They're waking up, so to speak. The judgment card for me, it's like an alarm clock, and it's waking them up to the reality of what's going on here. And, you know, maybe they're wanting to return, but you could have also been dealing with somebody who tended to do things very impulsively when you guys either broke up or this could be what's currently going on. Five of Cups, as we can see, maybe this person really disappointed you or through their own actions, they disappointed themselves, you know, and sometimes the Knight of Swords, they can get easily bored in a partnership. They're constantly about being intellectually stimulated. Okay. They're very analytical. They can be non-committal as well. You know, so we might have a situation here where you are dealing with a person who they see what they like and they go after it without really thinking of the consequences. And there could have been infidelity in this partnership because, you know, we've seen somebody having way too many choices, too many options. And that was clarified by this card options. Okay. So that created some sort of drama here. But I really do feel this person will reach out to you, maybe to apologize for 
their actions, or even things that they've said. There could have been a third party situation here, guys. Hmm. And so now, maybe they're overly concentrated on their sense of loss because you're not there, and that's something that needs to clearly heal when it comes to this person. Look at this, guys. We've got the Six of Swords, and that's followed by the Ace of Swords. So there's clarity right here. It could go either way. Either you cut them out of your life, or they cut you out because they were wanting to play the field, you know, getting themselves mixed up with other people. So if that's what was going on, I kind of feel with that Six of Swords, they're telling you that they really are ready to leave that drama behind. And the Six of Swords, it's a part of a transition, you know. So there's something happening here. Something's changing. And we saw that right from the very beginning. Transformation as well as movement. Things are moving forward, which is good, which means that whatever that happened in the past, they're really wanting to perhaps start fresh, start over, okay, right here. And so the thing is, though, Aries, perhaps you really do hold the key as to the direction that this is ultimately going to go. There's no guarantee for reconciliation. There's no guarantee that you would even be open to talking to this person. You could still be really upset with them. You know, it really all depends on what it is that you are focused on yourself and what you're willing to accept back into your life. If this could be possibly an ex from your past who wants to reconnect, they still clearly see that you're the best thing that happened to them. Part of their healing could be that they're able to make better choices, cutting bad behaviors out. It could be that too. Or if there was a third party situation, that could be what that Ace of Swords is representing, the need to cut people and situations out of the equation for a relationship perhaps to reconnect and heal and move forward. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab some dialogue here. So I'll go ahead and grab, first we'll focus on the masculine. So I'm going to pull from my Thinking Man Oracle. This is volume two, Divine Masculine Messages. And yes, Divine Masculine Energy could be a man or a woman. This particular deck, it's focused obviously on a, a male, but take it gender-wise how it makes sense for you. It's interchangeable, masculine, feminine. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the masculine wants to say to the feminine. I regret not telling you how very much I loved you. Is it too late for me to tell you now? Oh my. So, that's the first message from the masculine. I miss your voice, your laughter, the endless hours of conversations we had about anything, about everything, about nothing in particular. Oh, how I miss you. Oh, wow. Well, Divine Feminine, your masculine definitely misses you. They've got some regrets for sure. Let's grab one more card. What I would give to be able to wake up next to you every morning of my life. There's something about that. You know, maybe they miss seeing you first thing in the morning, holding you, you know, the, the intimacy. They're focused on that. All right. So let's grab some dialogue on behalf of the feminine. I'll be pulling from my Voices 2 deck here. For Aries, second half of July. Angels and spirit guides, please. What do we need to know here? Angels and spirit guides, please. There's nothing like the very first kiss you share with the one you love. Okay. There's something about the intimacy that's presenting itself here. 
Look at this though. And this is of course for my feminines who are open to trying again towards reconciliation. So this does say, can we try again? So is it too late for me to tell you now? And we have a feminine saying, can we try again? So this of course is for those of you who are open to giving this love another chance. Look at this. I swear I feel you astral travel into my dreams at night. That could very well be the case here, Divine Feminine, because they miss you so much. They think about you often, you know, wishing that they could wake up next to you. So there, there very well could be astral travel, 5D interaction here between you and your masculine divine feminine. So that's, that's really interesting how that's presenting itself there. All right, guys. So I wanted to go ahead and grab some lyrics here from my song decks. So we'll pull from heart songs and then heart songs of the 90s. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what else needs to come through here. And if you're not familiar with the songs, see if you're able to relate to the lyrics for the messages here for this reading. All right. What else do they want to share with you? Or you could, of course, relate to the lyrics for yourself and how you're feeling about the situation for Aries. All right. So the first song, Do You Believe in Love by Huey Lewis and the News. Now the feeling is beginning to grow and the meaning is something you only know. If you believe it, take my hand and I'll take your heart. So basically what this is saying is if you still believe in the love that perhaps you shared with this person, maybe give it another chance. I mean, that's totally up to you, of course. Bottom of the deck, we've got I'll Be There by the Jackson 5. I'll be there to comfort you build my world of dreams around you. I'm so glad that I found you. I'll be there with a love that's strong. I'll be your strength. I'll keep holding on. Okay. So maybe this person from your past, they're telling you now, it's like, I might not have been there for you the way I really needed to be there back then. But if you still believe in our love, then maybe give me another chance to show you that I'm not going anywhere, that I will be there for you from now on. That's just what I'm getting from that. All right, so let's grab a couple of songs from the Heart Songs of the 90s for Aries. Angels and Spirit Guides, please. All right, so let's grab a couple more songs for Aries. Oh my God, Please Forgive Me by Brian Adams. The one thing I'm sure of is the way we make love. You see, there's something about the intimacy. The one thing I depend on is for us to stay strong. There's something about the need for strength here. Okay, I'll be there with a love that's strong. I'll be your strength. There's something about that. Okay, the one thing I depend on is for us to stay strong with every word and every breath I'm praying. That's why I'm saying, please forgive me. I know not what I do. Please forgive me. I can't stop loving you. Oh my, bottom of the deck. We've got Unbreak My Heart by Tony Braxton. And I just find it so interesting that these three songs right here are basically performed by male singers. And then we've got Tony Braxton right here could represent the feminine, right? So it does say, don't leave me in all this pain. Don't leave me out in the rain. Come back and bring back my smile. Come and take these tears away. I need your arms to hold me now. The nights are so unkind. Bring back those nights when I held you beside me. And we've clearly seen, okay, what I would give to be able to wake up next to you every morning of my life. So Divine Feminine, we do have a masculine here who's telling you, yes, they absolutely want to return, but it's totally up to you if that can actually be something that can play out in the 3D, you know? So that's quite interesting how that's presenting itself. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and wrap things up here with some healing messages for the collective. 
from the angels for Aries. Angels and spirit guides, please. All right, healing messages, which I feel for some of you it's much needed. All right, so entering into the second half of the month, healing messages, please. Abundance, I love it. Look at this, guys. There really is something tied into music and lyrics. Maybe you guys are musicians or somebody could be very, a very gifted musician, or it's just music that brought you guys together. Let's grab a couple more here. And abundance could, of course, it's tapped into so many things. Financial abundance, but it could also be abundance in love and romance, you know? I actually love how this is presenting itself here. We've got serenity, answered prayer, and then we have miracles. So things I feel will smooth out, and whatever it is, perhaps if you are one to turn to prayer, maybe it will take a miracle for this to unfold, but it's not impossible, you know, whatever your faith might be, the possibility of a miracle happening, whether your love life or some other area of your life, all of these things can unfold maybe the second half of a month, or at least it's on its way to you. Okay, so I will leave that there, Aries, if you are interested in your own personal private reading, that information is down below. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.